The University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point Northern Aquaculture Demonstration Facility introduces the Walleye Video Manual, a series of instructional videos on intensive culture. Video 7, Larval System Turbidity. For this example, we are explaining how to manage turbidity in one of NADF's larval rearing systems consisting of 19 240 liter tanks which are supplied with flow through clay water for intensive rearing of walleye and related hybrids. This is only for an example. Your system should be designed by an experienced aquaculture professional to meet your needs. The walleye larval system is managed at a turbidity of 50 to 80 NTUs for the first 30 days at NADF. Turbidity is decreased from days 30 to 40 in preparation for fish to be transferred into a commercial water reuse system with multiple tanks at NADF. At this point, the fish are approximately 40 to 50 millimeters in size and can be safely handled with minimal loss. Turbidity is achieved by using a specific clay known as Old Mine No. 4 Kentucky Ball Clay. UWSP NADF purchases this clay from LNR Specialties located in Missouri, although there may be other suppliers that could be utilized. The properties of several clays have been researched specifically for larval rearing of walleye by Robert Sommerfeld, 1994, and others. The old mine No. 4 Kentucky Ball Clay was found to perform best to increase turbidity in the larval tanks without harming the fry. Other clays have shown to be toxic and to agitate the gills of fry at various larval stages in walleye. The clay itself is sold as a fairly low cost, but shipping can be a higher expense. Therefore, buying in bulk for future years can be cost effective. The clay has a long shelf life and is shipped dry in 50 pound bags. UWSP NADF utilizes 50 gallon plastic drums as our clay mixing tanks to hold a known concentration of clay water for the larval rearing system. Air from a rotary vane blower is diffused through several large pore air diffusers located at the bottom of the drums to keep the clay in suspension in the water. From these drums, a Flex Flow Blue White Industries peristaltic pump is used to pump the clay concentration up to a plastic head tank located on a mezzanine chamber above the larval tank system. At the head tank, the clay concentration from the peristaltic pump mixes with fresh, degassed, aerated, and heated water, which is maintained at 20 degrees Celsius. The clay concentration mixed with the fresh water will then yield a turbidity of 50 to 80 NTUs to feed into the larval tanks. The head tank water control system consists of a mechanical float valve with a freshwater inflow pipe, an overflow pipe, and a supplemental freshwater inflow pipe with a hand-adjusted Hayward ball valve. The head tank also has oxygen and air diffusers to maintain adequate oxygen levels and for keeping the clay in suspension in the tank. The head tank water gravity feeds into the larval tanks through a Schedule 40 PVC piping and valving that is appropriately sized for the adequate flows to the tanks throughout the entire larval to fingerling rearing cycle. As the fish grow, water flows, clay concentration, and peristaltic pump outflow will need to be increased to the head tanks to provide greater flow to the rearing tanks to maintain good water quality and rotational inflow for the size of the fish. Clay concentrations and pump outflow settings will differ between individual systems based on factors such as peristaltic pumps, head tank size, flow rates, tank system numbers and sizes. Understanding your system and also verification of flows and turbidity levels is key to maintain an appropriate NTU of 50 to 80 throughout the larval to fingerling rearing cycle. UWSP NADF manages their system in pounds of clay per 100 liters of water in the clay mixing tank. Refer to the manual to see ratios of clay concentrations for this specific system. For the NADF larval rearing system, two 50-gallon clay mixing drums are refilled daily to meet the needs of our system and to maintain the appropriate NTUs. To assist with daily clay calculation, the drum is marked at every 50 liters. This way, it is easier to estimate how much water is needed to fill the drum and thus how much clay to add as the ratio. There are two main ways to change the NTUs of the system. 
first by changing the clay concentration ratio in the clay mixing tanks, or to change the outflow of the peristaltic pump to the head tank. Both are managed at UWSP and ADF to provide correct NTUs. After cleaning the larval system as shown in the previous video, the clay tanks need to be checked and filled. The clay must first be mixed in water before adding to the tank to prevent clumping or settling. To do this, a 5-gallon bucket is filled with water and set aside. Next, the amount of clay needed is weighed out. Again, this is according to pounds of clay per 100 liters to fill the clay mixing tank. The weighed clay is then added to the bucket of water. To mix, an electrical paint mixer works well. To limit the mess, a hole is drilled through a bucket lid in which the mixer bit can fit through. The clay and water should be well mixed for about a minute. After the clay and water are well mixed, it can then be added to the clay mixing tank with the addition of fresh water. The facility has plumbed in a fresh, heated water line to the clay mixing tank for ease of filling the tank when adding the clay. Depending on tank size, flow rates, and peristaltic pump outflow, the clay tank may need to be refilled once or several times daily. It is important to monitor how quickly the clay tank water is being utilized, especially when the flows are changed, to ensure that it will not be drained out overnight. This concludes the video on turbidity in the larval system. Continue to the next video on transitioning to RAS.